Hello, 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 how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. Hello, 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 how are you? You're fine, you're fine, you're fine, thank you. Precious ones, you are all welcome to Kiss Down with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. My name is Nina Ajay. I am your host. Precious ones, you are all welcome to today's Bible lesson or Bible fun. We always come here every Saturday to learn and to have fun at the same time. We have gotten a lot of children that have written to us how this program has been helping them a lot. And we want all of you to invite friends to join us and record with us. Or you can sit at home and invite a friend, a mommy and daddy, to join you in the couch and then watch us and learn so much. Grab your papers, grab your notes, grab your pens, pencils, and put something down. And then when you're done, when we're done with the recorded program or when we're done with this lesson, take the time and go through the lesson. And I bet you, I bet you, you will learn so much. God richly bless you. I have precious ones that have zoomed in and are here with me. And they are going to record them. Um, sorry, I'm getting carried away again. So they are going to introduce themselves. And when they are done, we will go ahead and start with our memory verse for the week. So the first person can introduce herself. Hi, my name is Shimona Akwa, and I'm from Harrisburg District. Hello, my name is Ben A. Thibault from Cincinnati District. Hi, my name is Darren Foy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is James Osei Ambofo from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Declan Foy from Cleveland District. Yay, God bless you all. Declan Foy from Cleveland District. God, Cleveland, God richly bless all of you. Precious ones, we are going to go ahead and learn our memory verse for the week. And today, our memory verse will be taken from James chapter 1, verse 17. James chapter 1, verse 17. I want you to open your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 17. James is in the New Testament. James chapter 1, verse 17. And I read, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Amen. Amen. So, precious ones at home, we want you to practice your memory verse and share it with a friend. Share your memory verse with a friend. Our lesson for this afternoon, our lesson for this afternoon, we have titled it The Unchangeable God, The Immutable, The Unchangeable God, one of the attributes of God, The Unchangeable God. I know when I say The Unchangeable God, a lot of things are coming into your head. We are going to learn about why we say that our God doesn't change. He's unchangeable. We'll be learning so much about our God this afternoon. So precious ones, I want you to stay put and don't lose focus. Just go ahead and just join us and let's just be in the flow, okay? So at this moment, we'll go ahead and we will let um, James read for us. We'll let James read our scripture, our main text scripture reading for us. So our first reading, we will let James read Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. Luke chapter oh, hello, 19. Hello, I'm Tinina. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, okay. we can hear you. All right, yeah. I'm going to be reading Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10 from the NIV, and I read, the story is about Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. 
When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay, I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. I just read Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, from the NIV. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you, James. Um, The next person will read Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 for us. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, 19 from the NIV verse 5. God bless you. Fantastic reading too. Um, Declan, God richly bless you. And then we will let um, the next person also read First Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 29. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 29. He, he who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a human being that he should change his mind. Amen. Amen. God richly bless, 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 bless all of you. God bless all of you. So per what we have read this afternoon, we have learned about, we, James read Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. Beloved, the theme is the unchangeable God. The unchangeable God. And to just sum the Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, Zacchaeus was known for being a cheat. He was a cheater. He was rich. And he loved being rich more than anything else. When Jesus came to town, Zacchaeus wanted to see him. So he climbed a tree so that he'll be able to see Jesus over the crowd. See, he was trying to cheat his way out there again. Jesus approached um, Zacchaeus and then told him to come out of the tree because he was coming to his house. Wow, I'm sure he'll be shocked, right? The people in the town couldn't believe that Jesus was spending time with a sinner. They're already passing judgment. They are being judgmental, right? Mm -hmm. Upon meeting Jesus, Zacchaeus changed. Hallelujah. He told Jesus he would pay back everyone he had stolen money from and would give half of his stuff to the poor. Jesus responded by saying that he had come to seek and to save the poor, or to save, excuse me, to save the the lost. You see, Jesus didn't only come for the saints. Jesus didn't only come to save those that are clean, but Jesus came so that you and I will be saved so that those that will repent and want to change can change. We are talking about change, change, change here. Mankind is constantly changing. You and I are constantly changing. Like the seasons, we are, right? We have winter, we have fall, we have summer, we have spring. Our character changes, our appearance changes, right? And so on and so forth. Everything that has being created is constantly changing. But God, who is the creator, does not change. He is constant. He is unchangeable. He is unchanging God. What does it mean that God is unchanging? Beloved, when it is said that God is unchanging or immortal, immortable, it does not mean that I don't know how to say it. 
it, it does not mean that he cannot change, but simply he does. It means that he cannot change. God was the same when he created the earth as it is today. He will always be exactly the same in all his perfection and what? In glory. For all eternity, God will still remain the same. There is no eternal action that can be imposed upon God that, that will pretty much cause him to change. God expresses differences in what? Different emotions as he interacts with his creation at every given time. But you know, he will always respond to everything according to his what? According to his, his, his unchanging character. So beloved, listen, precious ones, we change. Humans are finite. God is infinite. He doesn't change. God is unchanging in his being, in his perfection, in his purposes, in his promises. Oh, hallelujah. God can never get better, right? And he can never get worse. His perfect being is incapable of changing. Since such capability would be itself simple, what? An implied imperfection. Precious ones, I want, before I open the floor, I want um, Benedict, right, to read Psalm 102, verse 25 to 27. It talks about the same. He is God of yesterday, the God of today, and the God of tomorrow. He doesn't change. He is still the same God. Benedict, can you read for us? Yes, ma'am. Psalm, Psalm 102, verse 25 to 26. And I'm reading from the NIV version. In the beginning, you were the foundations of the earth. And the heavens are the work of your hands. 26. They will perish, but you remain the same. Mm. They will all wear like garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be discarded. Amen. Amen. Everything under the sun is constantly changing. Ever since the beginning of time, the created world has been aging. It has been decaying back to back, right? This is observed in the world by the scientists that what? The world is changing and it keeps changing. But the God that you and I serve is the same God who doesn't change. He's the same God today. He's the same God tomorrow. And he's the same God of what? Of yesterday. Precious ones, I want you to think. Yes, there are. And then we come to James. Okay, what I wanted to say that I find this extremely ironic because we are talking about the unchangeable God, and then we mm -hmm. see Zacchaeus, a guy who literally changes in under 10 verses. And when you read <laughs> Hebrews 13, the verse 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So literally, that we literally just summed up our title right there. Jesus yeah. Christ is the same yesterday, yeah, forever. Literally, that's what Apostle Paul literally says. And then we see this really extremely short guy going there and changing him 10 times. He used to be one of the richest people in Jericho and say, give me, I'm going to be poor again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here, you see, the Bible didn't say he's going to be poor, right? But one thing we know is that when you read the Bible, he took things that didn't belong to him, right? He was ripping people off. He was so greedy to be rich and let somebody be poor. He would rather have a, a, a big head of goat or cow, cow meat on his table and for somebody to have no food or nothing on his or her table. And that was okay for him, right? It's just an example. But you see, this man changed. He was touched by God, right? When people were passing judgment, People thought that when Jesus is coming to town, the people that he needs to spend time with should have been them and not that sinner, not that greedy rich person 
right? And as what Darren said, not that short man, right? But guess what? He is the one God came to see, right? So what 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 are we learning? What are we learning from this discussion? Yes, James, and we go to Benedict, and then Giovanni. So I just wanted to say, <clears throat> I was I was wanting to say something. So when we were doing the Bible scripture readings about Zacchaeus, I didn't really um, understand how it it was related to what we were talking about, and then I found. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 and it says that and if from the NIV it says that and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his mm -hmm. spirit who lives in you so I was listening to the story and like you said Jesus came and through him touched Zac Zacchaeus to like um give back what he stole to the poor. So what I'm what we learn from this is that number one, Zacchaeus had to be immensely rich because mm -hmm. he was a wealthy tax collector, right? And back in the um Jewish society, you pretty much had the same job. No, sorry. So things when you were a child, you learned the job that your father had. So in this context, we can probably assume that Zacchaeus's father was a tax collector. So even when he was born, he was learning all the tax collector jargons. He was learning all the keywords, the loopholes of being a tax collector, meaning that he spent his entire life until Jesus came and touched him being a tax collector. So that means for his entire life, can you imagine how many people he must have scammed in his entire life? Let's just say... He scammed 10 people, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say he makes $10, right? So that means he said he gives half of all of his possessions to the floor, meaning he's get, he gives $5 to the poor. He gives us clothes, his house, everything he gives to the poor. And he pays the people who he wronged equal and four times more. So it's like paying your mom your allowance times four. So you must see how like immensely wealthy he was because that half amount of money he had shouldn't be able to pay for an entire lifetime of wrongdoing, yet he had the money to compensate for that. Now, when Jesus comes in and he is talking to Zacchaeus, number one, what we have to find out is that God is all knowing because in in in, in um Jerusalem, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, in Jericho, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of sycamore trees. And there was a huge crowd. Yet when Jesus walked, how did he know to pick up his head and say, Zacchaeus, come down? Mm -hmm. How did he know to do that? He must have been an all-knowing guy. Now, if you look, if you read um, further in the New Testament, you see Jesus. Um, he, you see that he meets a lady at the well, and he gets her to also um, go and stop doing evil. So... What I'm trying to draw a conclusion here is that Jesus doesn't change in terms of how he deals with sinners. Mm -hmm. Because when he met Zacchaeus, he got Zacchaeus to stop his sinning and, like, recompensate, to, like, to the poor people that he stole from everything he did. When he met the people at the cross, he got them to, a lot of them to stop his sinning and to go with him to heaven. When he met the lady at the well and he told her every wrong thing he did, he also got her to stop sinning. So that means Jesus doesn't change in this mm -hmm. aspect of how he deals with sinners. Mm -hmm. So the exact same Jesus, he's being consistent. Sometimes when my mom tells me that I'm not doing something wrong and she says that, if you think I'm just making things up, why would I be consistently telling you every single time that you're doing the same thing wrong? So I think that Jesus really is an unchanging God because throughout the entire New Testament, he's always had the same approach in how he dealt with people. Now, if you go to the um, theme for our um, topic today, it says that Jesus is the immutable, am I pronouncing it right, the immutable God? Mm -hmm. the immutable God. And if you go in Greek, immutable, which is ametophetos, it means that, number one, it's it means not to be transferred, not transposed, fixed, and unalterable. Mm -hmm. so meaning that for God to distribute or to have that quality, it cannot be altered 
like you, you made an example that for the seasons, people change like the seasons, right? There's winter, there's spring, there's summer, and there's fall. Yet God does not ever change between all those seasons. So I just wanted to bring that point. Amen. God bless you for your contribution. Yes, uh, Benedict, and then Giovanna. I just want to say, the stuff around the world is changing. iPhones, the technology, the food that we eat, it's all changing in that stuff. But God doesn't change. And now that we know that God doesn't change, that means we can rely on him and count on his promises. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Whenever we ask God for something, and that's actually reasonable, he'll actually stay in for us. And once we change ourselves, God, pray to God to help us change, we become agents of transformation. Now that we God, when God looks in the mirror, he sees us, we can now go as, as all perfect and all that stuff and go help people to help all of us become one and reflect God. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Benedict. Yes, Giovanni. So when I thought of the, the, um, the unchangeable God, it made me think when I was a little girl. When I was a little girl, I used to think that I used to think that the pastor was God. And so, and so one day I asked him, hi, God. And he's like, I'm not a God. God is unchangeable. And I'm like, but I've never seen you, like, you're always the same. But he's like, yes, but God never changed. He will forever love you constantly. Me, I will get annoyed with you, but God he may get annoyed, but he will still love you no matter what. And, no. that, and so now that I think about it, I'm like, why did I, why did I think that? Because like my Sundays, that was like the day before my Sundays, like actually, no, I was, the, my Sunday school teacher had taught me that topic before I came down to tell him, hi, God. <laughs> <laughs> so why am I now here telling him hi hi God because my Sunday school teachers had just taught me the topic that God is unchanging but him he's not unchanging he will forever change God bless you for your contribution God bless you so precious ones as we can all relate to the story we know we know and we know that our God doesn't change. And if we are to relate it to the story of Zacchaeus and then how Jesus touched him and told him to come down for I'm spending the day or I'm spending the evening in your house, which he was surprised, but it did happen. Precious ones, I want us to just think back to what Zacchaeus was like at the beginning of the story, right? Everyone in the town knew that Zacchaeus was a sinner, right? The same is true of us. The Bible tells us, just as James read in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to the 12, and then when you read the 23, that just like Zacchaeus, we are all sinners and we all love ourselves and our own ways more than what? We love God sometimes in the category of what, being a sinner. But the Bible also tells us in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight to nine, that we can't, we can't change that truth about ourselves on our own way, right? We can't make ourselves into something that is not a sinner. But the Bible tells us in the Romans that what, we haven't been left to change ourselves. But that just like Jesus came and met Zacchaeus, where would he was? He was a lost sinner. That Jesus would came in and met with him and made things right for him. Precious ones, I just want us to discuss that piece. You see, I want you to keep this in mind. Our God never changes. He's the same God of today, tomorrow, and forevermore, right? And man is finite. We change, right? 
a sinner, Zacchaeus, right? Who was ripping people up to get more richer and richer and richer. God came to town. God didn't look for the pastor. God didn't look for the priest. God didn't look for those that are going to church. God didn't look for the holy people. God, no, he being the all-knowing God, felt the presence of Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house. And the Bible says that what? He transformed him. He changed him. And the sinner what? had some what? A heart full of woe. He repented of his sins and said, I will give back whatever I have stolen from the people. Let's stop right there. And let's just think a little bit and talk about that. Now, Zacchaeus, right? It's an example of we mankind that can change. The infinite God, who doesn't change? He's the same God today and forevermore. Now, who can relate to this story? Uh, James Hayne was up. Yeah, and then we come to that. Okay, um, I'm going to say something before you moved on. Um, I also want to say about God being unchanging that um, there's this very popular um, Christian artist named Sinatch who does songs like Waymaker and then I Know Who I Am. We all know those very popular songs. She also made a song that said you are God, like it said that you are the same. And the lyrics said that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So even now, some people still acknowledge the fact that God doesn't change. And mm -hmm. also, like you said about Zacchaeus and God being a sinner and him changing, you're right. That is that is also how everyone is. Even in um other people, what they believe in, they have this other people, they have this God called Janus who has two faces. And they say that sometimes he changes from being bad to good or, or something like that. So even they also, they have changed, which shows you how um, not good their gods are, but how like how our God is, because he never changes. Even, even It even says in the Bible that the same God of Israel who never sleeps nor slumbers, meaning that for all eternity, God's wide awake watching over us. Mm -hmm. And in Zacchaeus' context, um, he was a sinner. You brought something very interesting when you said that he didn't look for the priest. He didn't look for a holy person to go and stay at because Jesus being the son of God, um, even in the New Old Testament, when God was wanted to dwell with humans, what he did is he dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant, right? And he also dwelt in the tabernacle. So Jesus being the son of God, his right as a divine being was to sleep in the temple or go to the palace and he could literally command them to like put a place that society deemed as fit for Christ. But here he is going into town and he goes to Zacchaeus, a sinner who is cheating people just to become rich of himself. What, what's wrong with this picture here? So that's what we're seeing that everything God did was for a purpose. He knew that because he doesn't change, he has no problem. He could have just sat in heaven and because he ne he doesn't change and he's this um, all powerful, unsinning self. He could have just sat there, let humanity hash it out. No, but he came down to die for us. And when he came along the way, he also made sure that he spread the gospel in the world. And how he did that was when he went to Zacchaeus, because Zacchaeus also understood the meaning behind Jesus coming to stay in his house. That's what also caused him to repent of his sins and, and give his possessions and everything to the poor. So in aspect, that is also um, what we are as Christians. We can all change. If we are sinning, that's why we can go to God and we can repent and we can, and we can change from our sinful ways. That, that's one thing we can do because we are able to change. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Darren. And then Benedict. Okay. I think that what I wanted to say is that when you read Proverbs chapter 21, the verse 1, it says, In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels towards all who please him. That means that when I, what I understand from that is that literally he controlled the heart of the king. And then I also, I have also heard of the saying, the unchangeable changer, which 
literally means he is unchangeable, but then he actually changes. So I think, and I was sitting here wondering, so yeah, he takes care of the world, he came to die, very serious. But what does God really do to our fun? But then I realized that all he does say, yo, you have black hair, wait to make it white. Just wait for 50 more years, you know. So he's going to change you. He's going to change your principles. Everything that you believe in, he could change you. I think that's why sometimes he just comes to the earth. He looks and he resides here. So, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Too much blackness, you know. I'll make it a little bit more. Then another reason why I think God went to Zacchaeus' house was because, well, we all know he's ultra holy. And if you had gone to a priest's house and you see him sing like, boom, 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 like, You'd have just been disappointed. Like, this is a priest. This is someone who's supposed to like be next to my holiness. Yes, like three thousand miles away, but next, you know. Little <laughs> far, okay. but next, you know, closest. Okay. That's what you'd expect. But uh, he went to Zacchaeus. He knew that he was a sinner, because that one, yeah, you can actually attest that if he does this, well, it's normal. Priest uh, sinning isn't really likable. <clears throat> yeah. God bless you for the great contribution. Now, I want, before we come to Benedict, right? I just want to raise, okay, Benedict, you're coming first because maybe it will lead to a question that I will put on the floor. So Benedict, you can finish. I just want us to focus on, okay, now let's come to Benedict before you come in so that when you, when you, um, when you get a floor, you can also add that. I want us to, whilst Benedict is on the floor, uh, to contribute, I want you to think from the aspect. I want you to look at this scenario. Remember when the the Jesus said, "Zacchaeus, I'm going to I'm I'm coming to your house." Right? The the crowd, the people standing around, were disappointed. Right? Like really, Jesus, you have to go to the sinner's house. Right? How do we relate to that? How do we relate to that aspect? So we'll go with um, um, Benedict and then we come to Daryl and then James and then Giovanna. I just want to talk about the last question before we get to this one, which is age of transformation, which comes back once, once I talk about it. Like, because God, God's unchangeable, but he comes to change people. So once he came, like the Holy Spirit, once he touches a kid, he touches, or once the Holy Spirit touches anybody, it's like going from Nintendo to Sega, or Sonic to Mario. It's like a whole other dimension, like a whole new change. Kind of like he did to Saul and Paul. How Saul went from Paul, because he actually used that same power that he used from Jacquees and changed him. So now that he was catching and killing um Christians, now he's going out and saving them. And making people and converting. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Darren. And then James. What I think the people in like in you know the, uh, by, the bystanders were, were probably yeah. thinking was that yo, I've been working with you this hot sun, my feet. You know, <laughs> you know how many needles I've slept on? Bro, you gotta come to my house, you know, heal me a few times, then we're all good. And then what that reminded me, what that reminded me personally of was the story of Jonah. You've seen how these people sin, uh, then God says, go and tell them to stop sinning, that we are not destroyed. And I was like, dude, I want to see a few fires every now and then. In the desert, you suspect like three or two every day, you know, something to heat us up. And then what I was thinking was, okay, so what we usually think is that we, because we are the ones, we are the righteous ones from eight years old, we started praying 40 days fasting. We expect God to always be like, so yes, you are my favorite. But when you read the book of Romans, it says that for God does not show favoritism. That means that mm. he loves us all equally, even the sinners. That is why he's always trying to get the sinners back to them. And that is why he forgives us, because really, in the amount of sins we've committed, um, <clears throat> if he didn't love us, uh, let's just say we wouldn't be on that. Hmm. Fantastic. God bless you. So Jesus came for all, not only those that are with right with God, but Jesus came for all, including who? Sinners, right? God bless you. Yes, James. And then we go to Giovanna. Okay, Auntie. So I was, I'm going to answer your question and then I'm going to say something else. So you said 
how did they make his shot? Um, <laughs> they said, how does this relate to us now as Christians? So let's take, let's look at something here. Jesus is a holy person and then he comes to Zacchaeus, a sinner's house. So let's ask ourselves one thing. Are we sinners? Well, each and every one of us is a sinner. And what this is saying is that if someone is an unbeliever, if they can truly accept God, that means Jesus can come and he can go to their house. Because the Bible says, do you not know you're the temple of God? And the temple is how God's house. So that means when Jesus comes, he, can, he dwells inside each and every one of us. And any unbeliever who wants to give their life to Christ, if they accept Jesus Christ, he can also come and dwell inside them. Mm. I also want to say something about change, that in the Bible, every single person who had an encounter with Jesus, their lives were changed. Because yeah. like how Benedict said, Saul, when he, he went, um, I, I, me personally, whenever I hear Saul's story, I think he must be one of the most evil men in the world. Because he wasn't killing the people, but rather he was holding their coats, which is evil. Because it's like watching people killing someone. And instead of telling them to stop, you're like, oh, it must be so hot. And, and, and it's Bob stopping you from killing this person. Let me take your coat for you so that you can continue. That's just evilness. So me personally, I have a grudge against Saul. But if you look at Peter, it says that he was, you know, it, it, um, instead of being Peter, it turned him to Simon Peter, which is the rock. And through um, Jesus, that's how the church was made. So every single person in the Bible, they've had a certain encounter with Jesus and their life was changed. Take a look at Moses here. He's gone through a lot of changes. Number one. He was the son of, he was a, it was in Egypt at the time where people were going to kill him, right? And then his mother puts him in a river. Then he goes to the royal family and he's a prince. And then he gets kicked out and he goes as a shepherd. And then he encounters Jesus at, at a burning bush and then he becomes the leader of Israel. Look at all the changes he's been in through in his short life seeing Moses just as soon as he encountered God. So like my point earlier, anybody in the Bible who has an encounter with God, their lives are changed and their names are also changed. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. God richly bless you. Before I come to the next person, I just want us to look at the unchangeable nature of God, the unchanging nature of God. The Bible teaches us that there are some things that God cannot do. He will just not do it, right? Because he is God. He's unchangeable God. Um, our God do not lie, period. He doesn't lie. We can find that in, in, in Hebrews chapter 18, 6 verse 18. When you get a time, I want you to read it. If you look at Titus chapter 1 verse 2, you will also find out that our God do not lie. When he says it, he says it. Our God do not change his mind. He doesn't say this today. Say, oh, my bad. I'm, I, I changed my mind. No, you can find that scripture too. You can find that statement that I just made. Our God do not change his mind. You can find it in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Our God do not sin. He doesn't do no wrong. Beloved. it. Read Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. When you read it, it tells you that our God do not sin. He doesn't do no wrong. The unchanging nature of our God. Our God cannot change. Malachi 3, 6. Our God do not change. He does it. Precious ones, this precious and unique man is who we worship. This is the man that Zacchaeus met, and he changed his life. Yes, Benedict. No, Giovanna. Jonah, Giovanna first, and then we go to Zacchaeus. We go to Benedict. When you said, have we ever been to a sinner's house, the first thing that came to my mind was yes, because I said my house. <laughs> because... 
at, when I think about it, everybody in this entire world has sin, sinned. Even though you would say I'm clean, I've never sinned before. You sin. That's that's even a lot. You've just sinned because that's a lie. We were all born. We we're all born. We came to this world. Say that even in your mother's womb, God knew you, right? But we're all born in sin. And through his saving knowledge, we all became born again, right? So we are all sinners. But when, when, when you are born anew and you ask for forgiveness of sins, remember Jesus sent his only son to come to this world for you and I to die for us. That is why now when you sin, you don't have to go look for a priest or a pastor and go with a sheep or a goat or a cow to go slaughter for, for the priest to go ask for forgiveness for you. Now, because our Jesus came to die for us, you and I have been saved. Now, when you sin and you repent and you ask forgiveness of sin, wholeheartedly from God, our God is faithful and just to forgive you of all your unrighteousness. Yes, Johanna, you can go. That was bringing me to my second point. Okay. <laughs> repenting is not the same as never committing a sin some okay. people just need to understand that okay <laughs> if you repent, it doesn't mean that you haven't like my friend i said i like we're christian so i usually hang out with her a lot she said i i i she said i'm so glad i repented now it feels like i haven't committed a sin i turned to her and i said yes you have just because you repented doesn't mean that your sin is now erased from erased from your life. No, you still have it. You still sinned, and it's still there. But you repented, so it's a bit so it's a bit better now. Because if you just sat there deciding that I'm not going to say sorry, then that makes it just worse. And it okay. God bless you, Benedict. Are you going to comment on her statement? Uh, I'm kind of commenting on her, but one of mine too. Okay, comment one, on her because I want to correct her a little bit there. And that's uh, why I'm asking whether that's what you catch. Just know. Yeah, okay. I'm going to comment first. See, first, I, I want to say. Wait, yeah. Let me correct it because maybe it may be different. So, Giovanna said that she told her friend that. When she says, and you ask for forgiveness of sin, it doesn't mean that the, your sin has not been forgiven. Your sins are there. Jesus came to die for our sins. When you repent and you ask for forgiveness of sins, it's a new page in your life. Okay? God doesn't store our sins. God doesn't say that I've forgiven you, but I'm your sins are packed somewhere waiting for you. No. The day you repent and you ask for forgiveness of sins and God forgives you, that's it. God has forgiven you. But you can never start somewhere and say, I have never sinned before. No. So just to Giovanna, you need to tell your friend that his sins or her sins has been forgiven. You cannot say that you have not sinned. That one, no. But there's no storage room of sin waiting for her. Her sins have been wiped. She has been made new, but she shouldn't go keep sinning and saying, oh, when I said God will forgive me, so I'm going to send. Oh, I'm going to send three because God will forgive me, so I'm going to go in. You see, our God is, is, is faithful. He will forgive us, right? But just let's bring it. If you always go to mom, mom tells you do this, you don't do it. He tells you do it, don't do it. You say, oh, I, I'm sorry, mom. How many times are you going to say sorry? Are you always going to do the same thing that you say sorry to all the time? Don't you think as human as we are, mom and dad will get fed up with us or your friends or your teachers? I'm not saying that's what God will do for us. Remember, he's the own changer. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his attitude. He's not moody, right? He sent his only son to this world to save us, right? Yes, Benedict, you can continue. I just want to put on um, one thing on the floor about the unchanging God. If God will actually not change his mind. Like, I just want to throw up a scenario here. If you if you pray to God and ask him, God, I don't look five minutes. Can you please give me two supreme bags? And you know two supreme bags cost a lot. 
But then tomorrow, God might be like, what? yeah, you can have those. And sometimes make it magically appear. I want to back this up with some evidence from um, the rich man and the poor man, Lazarus. How Abraham, even though the rich man asked to get out of Hades, Abraham said no. Because the thing is, once you're dead, and you're dead. Like, you, there's no coming back until, like, Jesus comes back for you which is only for the saved ones who are actually going to heaven. So that's why I want to back up. God bless you. God bless you. Um, before we come to, um, is it Giovanna? Giovanna, you want to comment on something? No, and James, would, I'll come to you. No, no, I have another thing. It would be, um, I think it would be James and then me. Oh, okay. James, you can go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to say one thing that, um, the power of God doesn't change. You see, um, but the God um, describes himself. Okay, well, sorry. People describe God in many ways. but And the most three um, ways that, the, the, the most three popular ways in the Bible is that God, well, sorry, the pop, four popular ways is that God being the Holy Spirit, the cloud of glory, the living water and the and his and the um, fire and we can see that um because in the new te sorry the old testament you see that in as early as exodus which is the second book of the bible god leads the israelites by day with a cloud of pillar of cloud and defends them by night with a pillar of fire we also see that in the same Exodus, whenever they had, whenever they set down camp with their tabernacle, as soon as the God, who was the cloud of glory, started moving, then they would pack up their things and follow the cloud. We also see that earlier in the Old Testament, right, when people, these priests were conducting like a worship service, and then when they were doing that they worshiped so well that god himself came down and his glory descended on the temple so thick that they couldn't even do anything so consistently we find references to these three aspects of god consistently throughout the bible as forms of his power so i was i also wanted to say that god's power too doesn't change amen god's power too does not change god richly bless you great contribution Yes, Giovanna, and then um, Daryl, you can read for us the Isaiah, okay? Yes, Giovanna, you can go ahead. Um, when you said that just because you repented, it means if you do another sin, you have to, um, when you, um, when you repent and you do another sin later, you have to ask for forgiveness again. That's what you said, right? I think that's what you said. No, I said it shouldn't be um, um, on a behavior. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Saying because that. you know that when you sin, God will forgive you. Go back and do it, and then you forgive. They'll go back, but there's nothing. Anytime you go, he will forgive you, right? But there's nothing because in your statement earlier, you said that you told your friend that, you cannot say you have not sinned, but when you sin, it's, it's somewhere. It's nowhere. It's gone, right? It's gone. God has forgiven, but make sure that you stay right with God at all times. But anytime you go to him and you repent of your sins, God will forgive you. So yeah. you can go ahead. So I was saying that some people, they will say, okay, I'll do this sin one more time and then I'll get good with God. But then the problem with that is if you keep saying that and saying that, eventually you never get good and repent to God. And so eventually the sins just start stacking and stacking. And then, but then when you repent, when you finally repent, it just goes, me. <laughs> yeah everything melts down right but you yeah. see just to add to what what you just said you see as you keep sinning your relationship with god what is that getting what you start yeah. the, the feather it, it keeps separating right because it's just you having that guilt, right? But the Bible says that what? 
as believers, we need to have a special relationship with him, a close relationship with him. It is when you have close relationship with someone, even in our mankind, you know, when you are close with someone, you get to know more about the person, right? Now, if you don't know more about, if you are not close and you don't talk often, you see that, oh, it's been a while I've talked to you. You see your person, hey, it's been ages. Yeah, why, why do you say that? Because you don't communicate a lot, right? So when you allow sin to come between you and God, it begins to separate the two of you, right? So you, if you used to pray a lot, now you're not able to pray. And I always tell children, my Sunday school children, I teach them, hey, sin, praying to God is like talking to God, right? Talk to God. A lot of kids have struggles with praying. And they don't even want to close their eyes. So now with my little ones at church, I always tell them, it's okay to open your eyes. Just pray, talk to God, right? Because sometimes some kids have, they feel like they are not worth it to talk to God because God is in heaven. They see him very far. One child told me, so Auntie Nina, when I talk, is God actually going to hear me because the sky is so far from me? I said, God is just close. God is in your heart, right? And I, I even confused her more because she, she doesn't believe God is in her heart, right? But it would take time for her to get there. Just like Giovanna told that word, pastor was God, right? When we're all growing up, I'm sure we all related God to something, right? And, and I was, when I was a child, I told them beyond the sky was heaven. Until the yeah. day I the plane and I realized that there is another cloud up there. There's no, there's God. So I began to fall closer and closer relationship with him because I realized that God is in my heart. If only I can walk in faith and believe and trust him, God is close to me than never before, why? But what separate us and draw us apart is sin. And he sent his only son to this world for us to close that gap, okay? So he's not too far, he's just close by. Let's talk to him. Yes, Darren and then Benedict. Declan, you're not talking to them, I'm coming to you next. Uh, well, it's mostly because I've been seeing everything he wants to say. Hey, oh, then, then he's he's going going to how are you allow him to talk? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So like next time, when I plan not forgetting. Okay, hey, though, what I wanted to say is that when Giovanna, I hope it's right, uh, yeah, Giovanna, when Giovanna was saying that when you repent and all of this stuff happened, it's a risk, what I was thinking was that when you repent and you say, I'm going to do this one more time, then I'll repent and then, you know, maybe do it another time. But then I realized that at first I used to think, well, that's, you know, first is you've repented, so you are good for now. But then I realized that if you've repented, repenting is actually you believing and thinking that you won't do it again. It's okay if you fall into it. It's okay if it's mistake, mistakenly happens. But if you like say, I know this is a sin. I know I'm not supposed to do this. Ah, come on, you're human. I'm going to do it one more time. Then you not repented. Like you literally lost the repentance. A, then B, when Antonina was saying that when we sin, we have to come, we are trying to come close to God. And, and when we sin, we go further from God. What one time me, the clan, my dad, and my mom, we had this discussion. And what I came up with, what, what I came up with was that we, there's like this bridge. The bridge is Jesus Christ. It's really long and stuff. The bridge literally basically has no end. But of course, it's, it still has an end, but uh, the end, it doesn't lead you anywhere. The closer you are to God, God is like at the very far end of the, at the very far side of the bridge. Then you begin literally nowhere. Well, you, you believe in Jesus Christ. Then you start your bridge. You try to pray, you read the Bible, you get closer to God. Of course, you sin, you walk a little bit backward. Then you pray, you ask for forgiveness. You go forward. Then if you continue sinning, you go backward and backward and backward. So one time, all of a sudden, you just lose it. Now you don't really care anymore. You lose the meaning of repentance. Then you fall back into that void. You're back to where you started from. And then I'm also supposed to read Isaiah chapter 55, the verse 8 to 11. Let's, hold, on, let's, hold on. 
Um, let me hear Declan's input. Declan, what do you have to, to what do you have for us? With all the discussion, what's going on in your head? Tell us, share with us. It's really nothing, just that, like, I have nothing, like, to say. Uh -huh. I Every day, I can just say one comment to them. Okay, say. So, they're speaking about the unchangeable God and don't think the bridge it connects like somehow, some way. When you think about it, like the unchangeable God, since he, he is unchangeable, he will not move anywhere that he is in the bridge. You are the person that you need to get closer to him, and he doesn't need to get there because he is already perfect. Darren, allow him. Allow him to talk. Yes, go uh -huh. ahead, Declan. You're done. You're done? God bless you. Great <laughs> contribution. So you see, there was something in your head. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes, Benedict, and then uh, you can go ahead and read, uh, Darren, after Benedict. Okay. I want to say a quick fun fact about sin and that stuff. The time of Giovanni and Nero and stuff. If Really, if you're not being tempted by the devil, it really where he wants you to be. Because when you're really close to God, like when you're close to the things that bring, the devil is always there to pull you back into the void until the end of time. So really, if you're not really being that attack, I'm not saying go pray that the devil comes to you. Cause like, mm. anyways, don't go praying that the devil comes to you, but actually keep working harder. Because the real, real issue is that some Christians really don't, when you don't feel a bond with Jesus Christ, you're not really being attacked by the devil that much because you're right where he wants you to be. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. I like the angle you came from. Yes, uh, Darren. James, you contributing? Okay, go ahead. Hmm? James, you can go and then is it me? you can read. Just make it short uh, for us, okay? Okay. Um, I kind of... Okay. So, um, what I was going to say is that sin is just like boiling water, right? So, when you get water, the water starts out so cold, and then when you boil it so long that it just evaporates and it's gone. That That's you and your relationship with God. The more you start to sin, the more the water starts to boil, and then when it gets to a point that you just keep sinning and sinning and sinning, all of God's protection, all of his blessings, all of everything that he's, he does as because as a child of God, one of the reasons why you're not that you're a child of God is that you don't sin. Or at least when you do sin, you repent and you turn away from what you, you return and you repent, you truly turn away from what you did and then you come back to God. That's what being a child of God means. But by you going and just still sinning and sinning and sinning, eventually you're going to be like an unbeliever. And the unbelievers, they don't know what, they don't get to experience what God's love is. And everything is just going to evaporate away, meaning his protection and his guidance and everything he has planned for you will just all go away. So we, we really shouldn't be sinning. Whenever we're sinning, we should really turn back and repent of our sins and come back to God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, Darren, can you read for us? Yes, I will. As I said, I'm reading Isaiah chapter 55, the verse 8 to 11 from the New International Version. Isaiah 55, the verse 8, and I read, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Verse 9, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Verse 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, the verse 8 to 11. By the way, that was not me. That was God speaking. So please, I did not say that. <laughs> God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Yeah. Amen. I, 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 I told Darren to read this to kind of, um, we are about to end or conclude. 
So precious ones, what have you learned? We talked about the unchangeable God. We talked about the, the unchanging nature of God. We talked about the unchanging ways of God, the nature of God and the ways of God. And we used the Luke chapter, um, is it 10, 10, 1 to 19, as James read, it talks about Zacchaeus, who was a sinner. And then Jesus, he had God was coming to town, right? Jesus was coming to town. He decided that what he had a change of heart that I need to meet this man. He wanted to see him. So he climbed on the tree. He went ahead. He had already heard. He pre what determined that I have to meet this person, right? So he climbed, he being short, he climbed on a what? On a tree, a second on tree, just to get on top to see him. But Jesus, who knows it all, knew that a man would do that. And this town that I'm going, I have to meet this man. And then what happened? The people were surprised that Jesus said, I'm spending time with this person in his house, right? But we got to know from the lesson that well, Jesus did not come for the righteous. Jesus did not only come for righteous. Jesus came for us all. He came for sinners, both sinners and righteous, Christians, everybody. He came for us all. Now, precious Lord, what have you learned? And we also looked at the word, the unchanging nature. So Zacchaeus, who he changed from being what? A cheater who was going around bullying people and taking their riches from them for him to be what? More richer. When Jesus met him, he changed him. That is an example of a man being what? Finite. We human beings, we are finite, right? And then the unchangeable nature of God. He's the infinite, he's the eternal God. God doesn't change, he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't lie, he doesn't, he doesn't change his mood. Today he's laughing, the next day he's crying, They're like bipolar, he's crying, he's laughing. It, it, it's No, Jesus is the same God today, tomorrow and forever. What have you learned that you wanna share? Yes. Benedict. Well, I learned that God's unchangeable in his power, his nature, and everything. But he uses his unchangeable nature to help change us so we can be a, a mirror reflection. So that now we're a mirror reflection, we can now become a, a transformation to go help other people who are also unbelievers so they can become a mirror of God. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, James. Auntie, can I go last? Yeah, if, if you go last, you, you make it short. <laughs> I have a lot to say. No, say it now, honey. Just go okay. ahead. So what I wanted to say was that, um, like I said earlier, God is a mateto, something like that, which is Greek for um, un um immutable. Hold on, let me see what it says. Ametothetos, there we go. So yeah, God is ametothetos, which is Greek for immutable, which is short for unchangeable. And throughout the Bible, we see that his power doesn't change, his presence in our lives doesn't change, how he deals with sinners doesn't change, how he protects us doesn't change, how he loves us doesn't change. But we as um, Christians or as sinners, we can change. We can change from being sinners and unbelievers into children of God and his um his holy people. So that's what I also taken away. That's what I'm also um sorry, that's what I learned today. God bless you, James. Yes, Darren. What I learned is that so yes, God doesn't change. By the way, James, can you please stop copying what I have to say? Hey. B, God is from history. Me. He, from history, he's changed a lot of people, like a lot. I mean, this guy is known as the humble prophet. But for a humble guy, humble people don't usually murder. He murdered someone, and then after that, he ran away. That means that he really doesn't also like being punished. He, he was supposed to die, and see God saved you. And not only did you just get a place, did you live? You also lived in the house of the Pharaoh. And after that, you, I wouldn't want to give up, you know, the house of the Pharaoh. Like, I wanted to the first place, but I also wouldn't want to the house of the Pharaoh. Then he went, he murdered someone after that he ran away. 
then you saw God and Ben, you saw Ben in bush. You see, you, if I were Moses, I start thinking, please, I'm not, I really don't want to enter into trouble anymore. Forgive me, at least let me live my life in peace now. You see, but then from what God did, he made it so that Moses, he couldn't speak, couldn't do any of that. Moses tried, 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 tried. The guy who couldn't speak, he was short to cut it. I mean, he talked to Ben, ben in bush for a very long time. He tried to say, I won't do any of this. I won't do any of this. I can, I'm not really all that good. Then God was like, I am the I am that I am. Then go and tell the Pharaoh this. Then he ended up going. And I'm sure it wasn't a family, re- a very happy family reunion. So, yeah, what I learned is that from history, God doesn't change, but he loves to change other people. He personally won't change himself, but he will change other people. That's what I've learned. God bless you. I love the piece you just said. That will be so basic for a lot of children to get. God hasn't changed, but God is in his business, loves to change people, right? And that is why in the story we read from Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 19, he changed Zacchaeus. He changed Zacchaeus. God richly bless you. Yes, Declan, before I come to Giovanna. What have you learned? I find that God loved God can change believers from unbelievers to believers in certain different ways, a lot actually. Like um, like he can use somebody to just come like what last week we talked about so when he used somebody when James said that a person was on the on a sea and then there was a flood which uh, that was which, um, that was which the, wait that was james i thought that was no uh, huh? you see why okay. i always tell you to leave that was me that was me <laughs> you see, james, that no wait going. How does that, oh, never so, mind i learned that in a certain different ways the lord can change you but then you certainly not you like not notice us at all. Mm. Mm. God bless you, Declan. Yeah, Giovanna. What I have to say about God changing people, what I learned is that God can change like people, but when he changes the people, nothing changes about him. Mm. Right now, he told. Right now, he changed. I'm not saying that this will ever happen. Right now, he changed Christina to a not non-believer. He will sit like somebody. Everybody around her can still be a believer. So, if God changes one person, it doesn't affect him or anybody else. He didn't mean to change them. God bless so, you, Giovanna. You done? Hello? Yeah. You done? Sometimes yeah. when you ending, you can say amen so that I don't cut through you. But when you pause, I assume you're done. But maybe you will not, you are not done. Okay. So you can say either um I'm done or amen, and then I'll go ahead and, and come in. Okay. So in conclusion, um finite you. beings cannot know the character of God. Nor the ways of God apart from his word. Auntie James didn't go. I, oh, I did. I did. I just, I just forgot to say something. Oh, you yeah. forgot to say something? Yeah. James because James was the second person. Yeah, okay, I just James, forgot to say finish. something. Okay. All right. What I also wanted to say is that the Christian life is a change. First mm-hmm. Peter chapter 1, verse 7, um, from the... It just says that the trial, from the King James Version, the trial of your faith, being more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tested with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So pretty much what this scripture is saying is that your faith, or be you being a Christian, you'll be tested like gold through fire. Now, that is a very long process, but I go through fire. It's a very long process. Number one, the gold has to be mined, right? 
And for that to happen, people have to blow up the earth with dynamite. Now, that, that hurts a lot, being blown up with dynamite. And then people have to, like, cut and then dig out the gold. Mind you, you're the gold here. So imagine someone blowing you up and then digging you up and then mining you and then cutting you out of a piece of rock and then shaping you and chopping out your impurities and then lighting a fire, burning you, passing you through fire, melting you down. That's a very painful process. So as Christians, you're going through a lot of change in your life and you might be thinking, why are all these bad things happening to me? Or why is this thing happening? Like, why is my friend doing this to me? Or something like that. But your faith is being tested. You as a Christian, you're going through that refining process and you're going through a lot of changes. For example, the Bible said that um, when you're, I was a boy, I did childish things, right? Meaning that when you were a child, you did things that children did. But now that you're a, a full um, Christian, there are certain things that you have to do now, so, which is why there's a children's ministry, a youth ministry, and then an adult ministry to um, help to nurture a believer going through changes in their Christian life. So I, I also wanted to say that the Christian life, um, there's a lot of change in the Christian life. Amen. Amen, James. God richly bless you. So precious ones at home and you here present, um, we were talking, or we've been talking about um, the unchangeable God, our God being unchangeable. He is not, he, he, he doesn't change. He doesn't lie. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change. He doesn't get tall, short, big, heavy, lame, lose weight. I need to lose weight. I don't have to lose weight. All doesn't happen with God. Our God is unchangeable God. And our lesson was taken from Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 19, where it related to Zacchaeus' story. When Jesus, when he heard Jesus was coming to town and he decided to, to meet Jesus. And Jesus, being the all-knowing God, um, realized that what? Um, when I get to this town, this is the person what Zacchaeus will be on the top of the tree and I'm going to tell Zacchaeus to come down and he's going to spend, um, um, be with him in his house. And he did that and he changed him. He transformed him. So Zacchaeus story here represent we men being the finite. We change our moods changes, our appearance change. That's why we are born babies and we go through all these stages to become what, where we are now. I remember I was telling my daughter, come on, baby. Say, like, no, mommy, five-year-old. She said she's not a baby. I said, but you are my baby. She said, no, you are not my baby. I'm not a baby. I'm a girl, right? So even at that age, she knows that there has been a transition, growth once in her life. So we change as human, but our God do not change. In the Holy Bible, God has declared who he is, what he has done and what he is doing in the world. Of all, it is true because the unchanging God cannot lie. Or what? He cannot change his ways. To every word that is written in the Bible, we, might, we have to say yes and amen to it because his word is yea and amen. It is the truth, the pure truth, the unadulterated word of God, right? God has sent his word into the world through what? Through his people, through us. As we sit here discussing the word of God, we are sending the message to everybody around the world and to all who believe in him through his son. We as Christians must communicate to the world that Jesus is unchanging in his nature and in his ways. We are urging the world to repent of their sins and have faith in Jesus, who is the savior of the world. May the Lord bless his word this afternoon. Precious ones, we know you have learned something. Even if you didn't hear anything, I want you to remember about God being the infinite and God being, and the man being finite. God being the unchangeable God and man being what? We change. We change, you know, with my hair today, 
in the next two weeks to come, you may not see Antonina with this hair, great, right? I will change. We change every day. We change our appearance, our moods. We change every day. May God bless us all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our work today. We pray that even as we have sown seeds in the hearts of everyone, we pray that these seeds will grow, bear fruit to your glory. And at the end of it all, your name will be glorified. We thank you for everyone here, everybody listening to us, oh God. We pray that, oh God, your will will be done on their lives. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace Time with Jesus brought to you by COP USA every Saturday, 12 p.m. See you next week. We love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. We love Bye. you. Bye. Bye.